Well, there is a fine line between life and death. A brief moment where people exist in purgatory. For most, this is nothing more than a short journey on the road to a better place. But for some who are stuck there, this can turn into an everlasting nightmare. And so is the subject of tonight's story. Another phenomenal one from No Sleep that has also been shared on Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so I could read your stories for you. Now, my dear friends, it's time once again to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. People always talk about the blinding light of bliss and peace they see during the last moment of their life. Like there's some indescribable force that pulls them towards their final destination. A place they can see their loved ones again. An infinity of painless existence. Oh, that's nothing like what I experienced during the 18 times my heart has stopped in the past year. Apparently... Being merely 27 years old is not an excuse not to suffer from sudden cardiac death. At least, not when I had an undiagnosed heart condition called Wolf Parkinson White. An extra nerve in my heart put it into overdrive, and I was essentially dead for about seven minutes. Those were the best seven goddamn minutes of my entire life. After a brief moment of chest pain and my face kissing the floor, there wasn't a hint of pain in my being anymore. To the best of my knowledge, I was still on earth, but somehow wandering the streets in front of my childhood home. I saw my parents playing with a younger version of myself in the garden, running around on a beautiful summer's day chasing me with a water hose. My mum was holding a couple of ice cream cones for me and my dad, it was a moment of pure bliss, locked safely in my fondest memories. My life didn't flash by, and I was simply trapped in a beautiful moment, and although I knew I died, I felt no fear. However long I spent watching myself, it was simply not meant to last. Before long, I was violently jolted back into reality as they shot my heart into a normal rhythm. I woke up for a brief moment, screaming in agony before passing out once more, something I don't remember, but was told by the nurses after the fact. They sorted out my heart as best they could, cut the extra nerve, and kept me in the hospital for observation. I had survived unscathed from the ordeal, and after a bit of healing, they allowed me to go home. Well, call it limbo. The place in between, or friggin' afterlife, whatever you name it, I knew I needed to go back. Unfortunately, the internet doesn't offer much in terms of the afterlife. I suppose they have bad internet reception there. <laughs> so, I resorted to the next best thing. Forums about people who had temporarily died but returned from the brink of their own demise. Searching for that, I found well, exactly what you'd expect. The bright lights, the tunnel, and even some who claimed there existed nothing but darkness. Their experiences might have been just as real as my own, but ever so slightly different, and definitely not what I was looking for. I ventured deeper, checking out methods of suicide. Now, don't get me wrong... I absolutely did not wish to leave this life quite so soon, but there had to be a way to oh, temporarily die and then get brought back without permanent damage. Of course, googling suicide only served to get me a list of prevention hotlines, so that was a short and unsuccessful mission. Even the deep web had a little more to offer. A few forums that weren't listed on any casual browser some with different experiences. People coming back with a profound new respect for life, and others who wanted nothing more than just to remain dead. Well, one click link led to another, and before I knew it, I had ventured far down the rabbit hole to a website no person was ever meant to enter. 
without providing a link. It was simply titled The Suicide Game. It was plainly designed, like any other forum, seemingly originating from the early days of the internet. Only text, no images. The posts varied from questions on what to expect from death and what people had seen on the other side. Holy shit, what just happened? By The Returned. What's the longest you've ever been dead for? By Dead Man 20. Any advice for a first timer? By A Bit Afraid 2. Well, you get the gist. There was a sticky post lingering at the top of the page that caught my attention. Submitted by the sole user marked as an admin, their name was Lazarus. How to temporarily kill yourself by Lazarus. Without hesitation, I clicked the link. It would either be legit or just a scam to somehow get money or provide a free virus for my computer. Uh, either way, I would quickly discover the truth. Are you brave enough to have a peek on the other side of life? Finally get a first-hand answer about what happens once we die. Maybe you've already had a glimpse and want more. But without the mass of actually staying dead. Then, Mortinux might just be for you. Hmm, a catchy description, I thought to myself, as I scrolled a bit further down, only to be met by a much more serious message. Warning. Read the following before purchasing Mortinux. Individuals who suffer from a chronic heart, liver or kidney disease, as well as psychological disorders, should refrain from using Mortinux in any capacity. The drug will temporarily stop your heart from one to three minutes by altering nerve conductivity between your atrioventricular node and Purkinje system. The electrical activity is quickly restored as the drug dissolves and you will be back to normal. Instructions on dosage will follow your order. Do not, under any circumstances, exceed recommended dosage or frequency of administration. Package content. 24 sublingual tablets. Delivery time, 5 to 7 days. Don't believe us. Try a sample of free tablets, free of charge. I clicked on the last link for the free sample. Yeah, taking drugs from a stranger is objectively a bad idea, but honestly, who'd voluntarily part with expensive drugs just to mess with someone? Even though I had suffered a heart attack, the doctors had assured me it would not occur again after having undergone treatment. After all, I was still a young man with a rare but treatable heart condition. I waited five days, and the sample arrived in my mail, conveniently disguised as regular vitamin C tablets. I locked myself in and read the instructions. It was pretty much the same as advertised on the website, with some advice on where to take the pills and to have some water and food prepared for your recovery. After little consideration, I thoughtlessly put one of the pills under my tongue. It burned slightly as it dissolved in my mouth. I counted my breaths nervously, holding one hand on my chest to see if it was working. Darkness. I don't even remember going out. Stripped from my body, I found myself walking inside an unfamiliar house. A family sat in a small living room, warmly lit up by a burning fireplace. Their windows were covered by a thin layer of snow, and a beautifully decorated Christmas tree stood idly in the corner, protecting a pile of colourful presents. A young couple sat snuggled up in a sofa, watching as their little son ran around with an excited smile on his face. It must have been quite early in the morning, because it was still dark outside. The kid grabbed one of the presents, tore off the wrapping paper. Their shared bliss froze me in place. I could feel their warmth as I watched them just living their best life, not a care in the world as long as they had each other. The son shrieked in excitement as he discovered a set of tiny model cars hidden within his presence. 
he instantly started playing around, making pretend races with his new toys. It was the purest moment I had ever seen. Their happiness radiated towards me, filling me with unspeakable joy. The crackling fireplace emitting its angelic sound, getting louder by each passing second. In fact, it was too loud. A log had somehow fallen out, and a spark had set fire to the curtains. I yelled out for the family, but I was nothing more than an invisible observer in their world. Within a minute, the room became engulfed in flames, and the distracted family had not noticed it in time to get out. The door was blocked by flames, and I could do nothing but to watch helplessly while they burned to death in their home. I violently gasped for air as I was brought back into the real world. I still heard the helpless screams of the family echoing in my ears. In real life, only a couple of minutes had passed, but it felt much longer in purgatory. I'm not ashamed to admit, I wept. Throughout my life, I've had loss, my parents dying at a young age from terrible disease. I've gone broke due to student debt, and have had some trouble finding a place in life, but nothing compared to watching that family hopelessly being trapped with no chance of escape. Two pills remained from the free sample I'd received, and I threw them both away without a second thought. I wouldn't voluntarily go through that again. A couple of weeks passed, as I attempted to push the memory of the ordeal to the deepest pit of my mind, pretending it had been no more than a horrible nightmare. But <laughs> life's a bitch, and then you die, quite literally in my case. By some stroke of luck, I had landed an interview, but on my way to said meeting, I suffered another massive heart attack. My chest was pounding, Pain stretching down my arm and to my back. I couldn't breathe, nor call for help. I simply fell to the ground, clutching my chest, once again enveloped in blinding, everlasting darkness. There were no illusions of pleasantries awaiting me on the other side that time. I was plunged straight into a nightmare of sorrow. I stood on a quiet road in the middle of God knows where surrounded by tall trees protecting the place from sight. I had nowhere to go. A car light smashed to bits on the side of the road. A woman, clearly broken by the impact, was hanging halfway out of the door, while a man desperately yelled for help. His phone had died on impact, and he had no means to call for anyone. No way to save his dying wife. Again, I was watching the worst moment of someone's life. A man who sobbed while he told the woman he loved as she slipped away into the afterlife. Despite the pain I shared with them in that moment, I also felt the presence of something even darker looming over me. I looked around to get a glimpse of silhouette in the distance, disappearing as fast as I fixated my eyes on it. It appeared humanoid, but much taller in stature. Before I could do anything else, I was dragged back to life. Now, let me tell you, the pain from the cracked ribs after having an inexperienced person performing chest compressions on you is not something you want to feel after waking up from death for the third time. But somehow, I had returned to the land of the living once more. According to the doctors, my heart was now permanently damaged. Not from the initial disease, but because of trauma. They told me the first heart attack was the cause. Lack of oxygen for seven minutes and all that, but, well, I knew better. That damned pill was the culprit. After frantically searching for the website, doing my best to retrace the steps I'd taken last time, I finally stumbled upon the suicide game once more. Mm, 
welcome back. A pop-up message displayed, remembering that I'd previously received an order of pills. There hadn't been a single new post since my last visit. I jotted it down to being an obscure website no sane person would visit. But as I scrolled down, I noticed that the forum had been quite the active place until just one month ago. Most of the posts were about expectations and experiences, no sign of any complaints. But I kept browsing, clicking further back on the forum until I finally found something that matched my predicament. The post simply said, I think I brought something back with me from the other side. I clicked on the link with a trembling finger, both hopeful and afraid to learn the answer. So, I've been using the pill for about a month now, and honestly, it was the most amazing month of my life. I've seen things I could never dream of, and most of my lifelong questions have been answered in one way or another. But, well, it's not the same anymore. It used to be so pleasant, so nice. But now, well, I keep seeing people dying around me. There's something else with me when I go there. Just like these shadows that are following me around. At first, I thought I'd taken too many pills or something. But now I keep seeing them in real life. I don't know what to do. Is this a side effect of the drug? Oh, I'm sorry if this isn't too coherent, but I'm freaking the fuck out. That was his last entry. A few other people commented similar experiences, giving the silhouetted figures a name. The Shadow People. Some of the users suggested stopping the pills while others said to just ignore the shadows, as they weren't interfering. Nothing there could help someone like myself, who regularly suffered from unexplainable heart attacks, even when not using the drug. No. Had I not thrown away the remaining pills, maybe the doctors could have helped me. But I was doomed by my own hand. While trying to play with death, I'd invited it into my life. They did what they could, giving me some anti-arrhythmic medication and an implantable defibrillator. It could buy me some time, but the doctors were not hopeful for my prognosis, saying I could last a few years if I turned out to be very lucky. It wouldn't even be a month before I suffered another heart attack. The defibrillator tried its best to put my heart back into sinus rhythm, but during that time, I once again faced another horrific sight. Despite being unconscious for less than a minute, it appeared that time passed very differently while in limbo. What met me on the other side was nothing less than a massive natural disaster. An earthquake in a country I couldn't recognize. Structures had fallen around me, and all that echoed through the air with the cries of despair. I couldn't understand the language, but the pain, well, that needed no translation. I walked around to see people crushed by fallen concrete. Some were trapped, while others were moments from death. My eyes met those of a man gasping his last breath, but when his lights went out for the last time, could have sworn he stared back at me. He understood what was about to happen, a sense of peace falling over him as he knew he was no longer alone. He had passed on to whatever realms exist after death, but for a brief moment we had been together in purgatory. I remain in solitude. I walked around the ruins of what used to be the home of thousands of people, witnessing destruction far beyond anything they could cope with. The shadow people lurked in my peripheral vision. They were just like the silhouette I'd seen before, but clearer this time, undoubtedly humanoids. They simply stared at me as I wandered around, 
pitying the traumatized citizens. I was repeatedly brought back from purgatory, never being allowed to simply remain dead and finally move on. Each time, I would be greeted by horrific sights, intertwined with the shadows studying my every move in their domain. In the coming months, I would die 14 more times. Never permanently, naturally, but enough to realize I had meddled with something I was never supposed to. I knew it, and the shadow people knew it. Little by little, they started following me back from limbo. They were everywhere. Never interfering, never approaching, simply observing me as if I was some sort of pathetic lab rat. There's a fine line between life and death, a brief moment where people exist in purgatory. For most, this is nothing more than a short journey on the road to a better place. But for some who are stuck, this can be an everlasting nightmare. At the moment of death, I know they can see me, and I do my best to assure them. Whether I am being kept alive by the efforts of the doctors, or by the mysterious pill I consumed so long ago, I don't know. I'm just patiently awaiting the day I can finally rest. My only comfort while I wait is to provide the passing people with a brief moment of peace as they accept their fate. Well, that one made you think, didn't it? It certainly made me think, well, don't take the funny pills and don't get anything off the web. Oh. <laughs> well, I thought that one was really intriguing. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And, of course, I will be back again with another story for you all on Wednesday. Sorry, no more six stories in six days this week. Oof, that tired me out. But I will be keeping to my regular schedule. So, see you all again real soon. Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it, if you like, on SoundCloud. Drop by the store. Pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>